All right, sorry guys, I'm a little behind on questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed up. <laughs> Do you have any vids on diagnosing noise issues? I have a one spot CS12. This is a good question, I like these. Uh, I've seen you recommend uh, and the lava cable type rope system. All the pedals are isolated, no ground loops, really frustrated. All right, so I have, I did some cool ones um, kind of with Rhett. I did one with Rhett where his pedal board wasn't working. Um, and really the technique is the same. You want to start at the end and work backwards. So what I mean starting at the end is, let's pretend your last pedal is a delay. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug your guitar into the input of the de delay and then go out of the delay to your amplifier. You know, try that, see what it sounds like. Is there any noise? Is it the noise that you're hearing? No noise? Then you're going to introduce the next pedal from the delay backwards. So again, starting at the end closest to the amp, working backwards. So you're going to introduce the next pedal. Let's say that's chorus. So now you're going to have guitar into chorus, chorus into delay. Delay is the last pedal. goes back to your amp. Any noise? No noise? Okay. Going to go to the next pedal. That's, let's pretend that that is a tremolo. So now you're going to get guitar into tremolo. Tremolo into chorus, chorus into delay, delay back to the amp. No noise? You get the idea. You're going to keep working backwards and you're listening for when does that noise start to come in? And so sometimes noise can be cumulative. It can be like the compounding of multiple effects that are adding this noise in somehow. Or it could be that you just have one culprit that's causing noise you know, in everything. Now typically, sometimes this happens either if a pedal isn't filtered very well. So I'm having this problem right now actually with this rig that, that, uh, that, that, I'm, that I just built. And there's a little bit of this high-pitched squealing that's happening. And I couldn't figure out what it was for the longest time. And I realized that the volume pedal, although it doesn't have any digital anything in it, it's analog, it doesn't like sharing with anything. And I had it paired with a compressor. And if I unplug the compressor, which is True Bypass, Keeley, the Keeley one, uh, noise goes away. Uh, and I tried it pairing it with a couple of different things and it just doesn't like to be paired with anything. It creates this kind of high pitch oscillation. It's very faint in the background, but I test through higher gain amps typically. So I know if there's an issue, the high gain amp will reveal it. And it, it's just a matter of working backwards on that stuff and really seeing at what point the noise goes away. And I did that this very same thing that I told you to isolate that that was the problem. And you really want to make sure in really isolating the problem that you're able to recreate the problem and take it away. So you know that what you're experiencing is actually related to the problem. Um, so that's what I would try. I don't think it's the power supply. I don't know anything about the tightrope system and whether that is solderless. And if it's solderless, there can be problems there as well, especially with relationship to the grounding. Um, because those are not, if they're, I don't, again, I don't know if this is solderless. Maybe they are soldered completely. There's a one that's like partially soldered. In fact, let me look it up. I'm curious like if what this is. So this is lava tight rope. Let's see. Okay, so this looks to be a solderless system from what I can see. Lava tight rope. Lava tight, yeah. Yeah, so solderless might be part of the problem here. I'm not saying that it is, but it's definitely something that I don't recommend that you do. And you can check out my video on why solderless is not desirable if your goal is to have the quietest, most reliable possible system. And I go into great length about why that's not used by professionals as kind of a professional standard and that it's great for consumer level stuff. Uh, and there's lots of options for people who actually make soldered cables for you. But if you learn that skill yourself, it's like riding a bike, it'll, it'll, it'll go forever. So um, I hope that helps, but feel free to uh, message us on any of our videos or send me an email if you're still stumped and, uh, and that doesn't help you isolate where the issue is. Uh...